Hello again, bronies, Pegasisters, and non-believers. I am Raz, and I'm here with Star Wars The Old Republic today. Uh, namely, the first Republic side flashpoint, uh, I think it's the Astalis or something? I'm not 100% sure on the name, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But uh, it's the first flashpoint as far as I'm concerned, because as soon as, you know, it's like you don't get any flashpoints until you actually get to the Republic fleet, and then this is the first one I have ever seen, actually, so... Either way, it's unlockable at level 10, or roundabout, so... I'm gonna say it's the first one. But, uh, before I actually kick the video off, I wanted to very quickly get something out of the way. And that is, this is a complete run-through of the Flashpoint, start to finish. So, um... Spoiler alert right here. I'll probably put that in the title as well, that this will contain spoilers, but uh, I wanted to, you know, confirm that before I went too far. That this is the full video, well, the full run, start to finish, story and cutscenes and all that intact. So, if you don't want the Astalis Flashpoint uh, spoiled for you, or you don't want to see it or whatever, I suggest turning the video off now and then coming back after you've done it or whatever, you know? <laughs> so, now that's out of the way, let's get on with the video. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna watch this replay, because I actually recorded this earlier, I'm just gonna watch this and, you know, replay it and try my best to keep the commentary amusing and reflect on things as I go. <laughs> First, you know, first time for everything, normally I record the audio live, but we'll see how this works. Uh, as you can see, there's four of us in total. I believe the, yeah, the group thing says two, but you know, we ended up with four of us in there, and even then it still took a while, it was pretty challenging in my opinion, for the most part, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm gonna shut up for a minute because there's a cutscene coming. This will also show off how the, uh, group cutscenes actually work, in my opinion. Or, it will, it will in a minute, because for some reason this uh, cutscene takes a very long time to kick in for some reason. But, uh, as you will see, it actually bounces between who actually responds to the person during the cutscene, and I'll explain a bit more after we get through it, because we're about to start. Excuse me. Yes, could I speak with you for a moment? You're a soldier. Republic Army, right? I'm sorry to bother you, but I was wondering if you've been contacted by any of the ship's officers. Why would the crew want to talk to passengers? Is something wrong? I heard a rumor that there's an Imperial warship following us. I know, I know, the Treaty of Coruscant. But I don't trust the Empire to keep the peace. The imps will always be a threat. No treaty's gonna change that. It's good to hear I'm not the only one concerned about the Imperials. The crew won't tell the passengers anything at all. It's not very reassuring. If we're in danger, the crew has a responsibility to tell us. Exactly. At least then we could prepare in case of an attack. Warning! Warning! Incoming fire! All hands! Break for incoming! Can you hear me? Are you all right? All systems go. Good, good. That was quite a hit. <clears throat> We're lucky not to be hurt. Listen, you have to get to the bridge. The captain will need all of the help he can get right now. Go, hurry. I'll see what I can do. With your skills, I'm sure you could make a difference. Good luck. Okay, one thing I want to clarify real quick is that the audio desync is unfortunately a problem with recording. There's nothing wrong audio wise with the game that I've found. No desyncs are out there. It's unfortunately a problem with recording. I apologize about that in advance. It does seem to correct itself a bit later though. So don't worry too much about that. 
Anyway, as, as I was saying, when it comes to conversations with the group, this has been covered by other people, and I know Jesse Cox kind of talked about it a bit, but I want to cover it here as well. As you no doubt noticed during the uh, <coughs> cutscene, conversation, whatever you want to call it, there was a, um, all four of our portraits were down the left side of the screen, and there was also numbers that appear after you make our choices there. And basically what happens is that the, um, the game acts as kind of like a roll-off system where everyone makes a choice, you all roll, the game automatically rolls for you, and then whoever gets the highest roll is the one who actually makes the choice, as you saw. You know, we, we all kind of got a turn talking to the NPC because we all, at one point, rolled higher than everyone else. Which I'm pretty cool with, you know, it keeps the story going and... There's some amusing moments where it's like one person will talk and then another one will cut in and, you know, it completely changes the conversation and stuff like that, but you'll see that later on. Uh, there's another thing that um, I was a little concerned with, but I've since been confirmed otherwise, is that uh, <coughs> with the videos, um, the c choices rather, when it comes to light side, dark side choices, I was a little concerned that, uh, you know, what would happen if someone made a different choice to me, but... As confirmed by Jesse, uh, it's basically like if you make the light side choice and someone else makes a dark side choice, you will get your light side points regardless of who wins, but it's a matter of if they roll higher than you, you will have to do the dark side choice from that point onwards. But if you pick the light side choice as your vote, then you will get light side points, you won't be forced to get dark side points. Here we go again, so shutting up. I have noticed, unfortunately, that it doesn't. Come on, Tyrus! You can make it, sir! You can make it! He's gone, sir. You're in charge now. What are our orders? Your orders? Weapons are out! Shields are out! Comms are out! There's nothing we can do! <clears throat> you need to stay calm. Who asked you? We're in the middle of a situation here. The bridge is off limits. Sir, we need all the help we can get. If we don't keep it together here, we're finished. Keep what together? The Imperials have us by the throat! We're as good as dead already! What's wrong with you? Are you really going to let your ship fall to the Imperials so easily? That ship behind us is one of the biggest in the Imperial fleet! We didn't stand a chance! Sir, incoming message! The Imperial ship is hailing us! What? Oh. Well then put them on! Republic Transport Esselus, this is Grand Moth Rikus Kilrin. Your defenses are entirely disabled. Attempt no resistance. We'll fight you and your Imperial lackeys to the bitter end, Kilran. Ignore that man! He doesn't represent us! I don't care who's representing you. I'm not here to negotiate. Your ship is transporting a known anti-Imperial terrorist and seditionist, the so-called Ambassador Vin Asara. I've come to collect her. Who? We didn't take any passengers by that name. I've never even heard of this person. <laughs> Interesting. Lying or incompetent? No matter. My agents aboard your ship have confirmed the Ambassador is there. What are you gonna do about it, Kilrin? You can't force us to hand this person over. I'm fairly confident that I can. Imperial soldiers are preparing to board your ship through its primary airlock. My agents will ensure that you do not interfere with them. If you attempt to stop my men from arresting Ambassador Asara, I will have every living thing aboard the Esselus killed. Where's the primary airlock? I'll stop the Imperials as they try to board. Weren't you listening? If we try to fight those slaughter us, we have to cooperate! It won't matter. Kilrin has us now. He'll kill us all. He's famous for it. The only one he wants alive is the Ambassador. If Kilrin gets the Ambassador while we're sitting in his sights, we're goners. Those soldiers have to be stopped before they can succeed. I'm glad we're all on the same page here. Listen. I'm sorry I lost it earlier. It means a lot to have your help right now. Thank you. Don't get any big ideas. I just want to make it through this. 
Trust me, you aren't the only one. I'll have our security team meet you by the primary airlock. They haven't seen much action, but Commander Narlock knows his stuff. Good luck. We're all counting on you. Now, as I was saying before the cutscene kicked in, I have noticed, for some reason during groups, well this is the only one I've done, but during the group it does seem to have a bit of a weird lag issue on conversations. I'm not sure if that was one of us actually lagging, because I've not had much problems with uh, conversations or that. Usually they kick in pretty quickly, but during this instance, or flashpoint rather, I did notice it seemed to cut out a lot. You know, there seemed to be a lot of times where we're just sort of standing there waiting for the conversation to start for a long time. I'm not sure if that was lag or maybe it was just something to do with the group where it was, uh, you know, just taking a while to kick in for some reason or not, I don't know. Either way, it's not too much of an issue, but it is something that bothered me a bit. Aside from that though, I haven't really seen any major bugs, you know, there's a couple of minor things like characters being incredibly small like that video I uploaded a while ago, but uh, aside from that, you know, the game's been pretty smooth so far, which is surprising for an MMO that's on its first day of launch. Very little server instabilities of that too, which is nice. Anyway, as you've seen so far, the game doesn't really, well the flashpoint rather, doesn't go too crazy. You know, it starts you off pretty easy, you know, only a couple of guys here and there to worry about as the story kicks in. Speaking of which... This is it, man. This is what you've been training for. The Imperials are coming, and we're not gonna let them pass, are we? Sir! No, sir! We won't be fighting alone. We have some very experienced volunteers. The Imps will never know what hit them. Havoc Squad reporting for duty. Havoc Squad, the best in the Republic. And they're fighting on your side, men. We can't fail. We won't. The Imps will cut through any second now. We need to take up defensive positions. And by defensive positions, he means stands in the middle of the corridor with no cover whatsoever. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, there is a, there is a weird moment Victory here, actually. Victory as you can hear, for some reason, the um, voice acting starts looping for some reason. I'm not sure what happens there. It's kind of weird, but that's the only real bug I saw the entire group. Anyway, as I was saying, it's the instance kind of starts you off as you would expect. You know, you only have like a couple of enemies here and there while the story gets underway. The Imperials set us up. And then you get moments like this where you get like a squad of easy to kill enemies followed by an elite, or accompanied by an elite that packs a mean punch. Nothing you can't really handle, but you know, that's pretty much the formula for this flashpoint I saw. It's like you know, three or four regular enemies, one, you know, charged up elite or strong enemy as they call them, that gets in your way. Nothing serious, but it, it does kind of have its moments, but for the most part it's pretty easy to just, you know, dive in, cut everyone down and move on to the next point. Yeah! We've done it, man! We've done it! The ship is saved! I'm sorry, Commander, but that... that isn't the case. You better start telling us what's going on here. Now. First Officer Hawken walked us right into a trap. The attack on this airlock was a ruse. After Hawken sent you here, Imperial Commandos snuck aboard. They were led by a Mandalorian mercenary called Iron Fist. We defeated the first group of boarders. There's no reason we can't defeat this group too. It gets worse, I'm afraid. Iron Fist and his Imperial Commandos stormed the bridge and now the entire area is locked down tight. How did you learn about all of this? I watched the whole thing happen on the security cams. What, what is this all about? Why are the Imperials so desperate to capture you? Because of my work. I'm a Republic ambassador. I traveled to Imperial-controlled planets and convinced their governments to come over to our side. You should have identified yourself earlier, ma'am. I could have better ensured your safety. I appreciate your concern, but this is no time to play bodyguard. 
We have bigger problems. We need to retake the bridge. The longer we leave the Imperials in control, the harder it'll be to remove them. I already told you, Iron Fist has the bridge locked down. There's no way in or out. Security lockdown. That is bad. Chief Engineer Salen might know of a workaround. Hopefully we can get to Salen before the Imperials. Do you know where he is? He and his team will be down in the engineering section. I'm sure they'll be able to help us. We'll need a diversion. If the Imperials notice the hatches to engineering opening, they'll flood the area with soldiers. My men and I can handle that. Form up, men! We're gonna go start some trouble. We're supposed to get all the way to engineering without any help? You're the best fighters here. No one else stands a chance of making it to engineering alive. I'll go along with Commander Narlock. Once you've cleared a path to engineering, I'll double back and join up with you there. Good luck. <clears throat> get used to seeing the map, I had a habit of checking it every couple of seconds for some reason. <laughs> well, not necessarily every couple of seconds, but I tended to keep an eye on it quite a bit to make sure I didn't get lost. Unfortunately, Christmas dinner was being cooked at the time I was playing, and I didn't really want to be here any longer than necessary. But I wasn't about to skip out of my group either. Anyway, as I said, you pretty formulaic with the actual encounters, you know, one Enemies will pop up, you shoot them, move on to the next group, pretty easy. And here we see the first of many mistakes on my part, namely standing in the proverbial fire. I didn't actually figure it out until towards the end of the instance that the, um, the circles now that appear on the ground are actually targeting reticules for enemy attacks. So, I will admit that was a pretty stupid mistake on my part, but I'm... With all the stuff happening and never actually encountering half the classes I'm working with before, I wasn't entirely sure that, uh, you know, the circle was actually something the enemy was doing or whether it was actually something one of my teammates was doing. You know, they could have been buffing the area or something and I was getting benefits, but really it's actually a mortar barrage or something that I'm standing in the middle of like an idiot. I'm surprised no one pulled me up on that. Maybe they didn't know either. But either way, that happens. Overall though, I found the Flashpoint was actually quite enjoyable, I mean, it might be a little easy in the places, especially since we had double the group, you know, it's only some of the bigger enemies later in the instance that really gave a huge challenge. As you can see, we're just tearing through stuff at the moment, we don't even need to stop and recover or anything. But, uh, you know. I think the story is really what made it fun, because of the fact that you, you were invested to see where things went from there, in my opinion. I wasn't too bothered, you know, it's pretty much WoW style, where it's just like, you know, kill the enemies, get to the boss, kill the boss, collect your loot, go. But actually, you know, having a narrative that drives you forwards... Yeah, come on, hit the button. Thank you. Time for another cutscene. Hey, Chief, come here. Come here, look. Look, there's someone out there on the other side of the door. You must be crazy coming all the way down here with the imps everywhere. Commander Narlock said that you might know of a way to unlock the bridge. The Imperials have it sealed off. The imps pulled the lock down? You gotta be kidding me. You really cleared this place out. I didn't run into a single Imperial on my way down here. Listen, there's no time to waste. Commander Narlock and his men are being overrun. We have to get the bridge unlocked now. So I've heard. I'd invite you in, but the lockdown has our door sealed too. Can you get the bridge open from there? Depends on how we go about it. Just let me think a minute. What about a reactor reset? That would disengage the security locks, wouldn't it, sir? Yeah, but a reactor reset vents the engineering compartment. We'd be blown into space. Besides, controls are on the other side of the door. Tell your lackeys to shut up unless they have ideas we can actually use. <laughs> he was just trying to help. Besides, he gave me an idea. The secondary conduits. They're spread around a bit, but if you shut them all down, the security will go down too. Then we'll be in business. 
I'll get the conduit shut down right away. There's no time to go running all over the ship. If we don't act now, the Imperials will overwhelm us. I'm sorry, Salem. We need to unlock the bridge while we have the chance. We have to reset the reactor. You and your men will be remembered. Now for time for the light side, dark side. We choice. can't send these people. Now, to as you can see, not when there's in the bottom left, I'll explain more in a minute. Fine, but you're dooming everyone on this ship. Sometimes sacrifices have to be made for the greater good. Don't want to talk over the cutscene. I make the decisions, Ambassador, not you. Fine. Who am I to argue? You crazy witch! Shutting down the secondary conduits will work. I promise. If you're going to do it, go now. The longer you wait, the more Imperials you'll have after you. Okay, I didn't mean to talk about cutscene, my bad. But if you paid attention then, you would have noticed that uh, two of us actually got light side points for that scene, but one of us got dark side points because he chose the option to vent the, uh, to reset the reactor and kill the engineering crew. So as you can see, one of us won the roll off and got the uh, light side choice, so he doesn't get to make his choice and kill everyone. But he still gets the points for taking that route. Which in my opinion is a pretty solid way to do it, you know. I mean I thought about it afterwards and other ways they could have done it. And really without removing the choice entirely or forcing you all into separate cutscenes, there's really not much no other way you could do it. There I go with the map again. Because I mean it's like unless we all become get separated and do individual cutscenes. Your light side, dark side choices can only really be managed in that way, in my opinion. Maybe I'm just too simple minded to figure out a better option, but I think it works. You know, you get your points based on the decision, but you don't necessarily get to make the decision. So, no complaints here on that regard. Another nice touch here is you find various lore points throughout the game. Even during instances you find these codex entries you can unlock, which give you experience and bonuses like that. I think there's achievements and stuff as well, I'm not too sure. But still, it's a nice touch to be able to, you know, run around and do the instance and then just stop off and get a quick lore update. I mean, if you're into that you can read it, but if you're not, then you can just hit it up for the experience gain. I think that's the last kind of it. Now another thing I should mention is, um, during the cutscenes you'll notice there's a little box that pops up every time you make a conversation choice with, uh, three purple silhouettes and a number of points. I'm not entirely sure what they are. I know they're social points, but I don't know exactly what they gain. There's like a social rank under your character tab and all that, but I don't know what the actual benefit is of, uh, getting the points up. I don't know, I, th I think there's rewards, but I'm not sure what they are exactly. I haven't looked into it much. I don't know how you managed it, but you did. The security doors around the bridge have opened. I've yet to face anything I can't overcome. There it is. I don't know where I'd be if you hadn't been aboard. Probably locked in an Imperial prison, or worse. I'll go and help Narlock with another diversion, so you have as little resistance as possible when you attack the bridge. You'll still have to deal with Iron Fist, though, and that's no small challenge. What do you know about Iron Fist? I only know Iron Fist by reputation. But he's been doing Grand Moff Kilrin's dirty work for a long time now. He's never been captured, defeated, or even driven back. You have your work cut out for you. I'll just kill him. Like I kill everyone else who gets in my way. Just be careful. Mandalorians always have a few tricks up their sleeves. All right. No more time to waste. Narlock, are you there? Can you hear me? Copy! This is Narlock! Set for second offensive! That's right, Commander. I'm on my way to join you now. Let's hope Iron Fist isn't paying too much attention. Narlock and I will do our best to keep him distracted. Good luck. For the record, the voice cast in this game is damn amazing. I really like the smuggler's voice actor. And of course Jennifer Hale as a Republic Trooper is always spot on and epic. Which is what I'm playing, if you hadn't already figured it out. 
Republic Trooper. Um, I just upgraded to the advanced class of Vanguard, which means I can be a tank in a few... Well, once I get my talent points in order, I can become a tank easily. Get some better armor and that, and I'll be all set for it. Unfortunately, I'm not being a very good tank at the moment, mainly because uh, I don't have any talents set up to draw aggro and that, and I don't have many abilities for it either. Most of my abilities consist of just spamming the hell out of my enemies with like full automatic or grenades, and I think I make a mistake there, I'm not sure. I know there's a few times where I make the stupid mistake of popping the plasma cell out of my gun, which is stupid. That's one thing I have noticed is, um,. I don't know how many there are, but you actually get the option to change the cell in your gun and get different benefits based on it. Like Plasma Cell gives you essentially incendiary rounds. You get a random chance to set enemies on fire and you get extra damage when it procs. But aside from that, I haven't actually gotten any other. Oh, excuse me, I haven't got any other cells yet to test what they do. Overall, Trip is a pretty solid class. I actually figured, you know, anything that didn't have a lightsaber would be pretty boring, actually, but I'm actually playing my Trooper a lot more than any other class. I have a Sith Inquisitor and a Jedi Knight I've been playing as well, but this is the one I've been playing the most. Surprisingly. Not that being a Jedi or Sith is boring, it's just, I don't know, this is the character I've enjoyed playing the most so far. Nothing quite like throwing a sticky grenade at the enemy and watching him blow half his team up in the process. There's another slight glitch there, as you saw, the guy dies, but for some reason he stays standing up. I don't know what happened there. And here comes a rather amusing point where the team... Unfortunately gets a bit confused as to who goes where. Because for some reason, two of us come up here and clear the chamber after the elevator, but the other two don't turn up at all. And it <laughs> ends up leading to a rather amusing moment of all. For some reason, no one decides to question what happened, we all just kind of stand around you know, waiting for everyone else to turn up. They're waiting for us downstairs and we're kind of waiting for them up here for some reason. I don't know why, but I much prefer the whole reloading a gun to get health back to eating food. No idea why, I just prefer that. Anyway, as you can see, the smugglers turned up and uh, we're just kind of standing around because the, the other guy, the Jedi, went back downstairs and left us here. When the Jedi comes back, we start sitting around waiting, and the other trooper is still downstairs for some reason. It's a rather amusing moment, and then of course we start getting XP gain and explosions go off. That draws attention. <laughs> I don't know what happened here. I was trying to get the instance done as quick as possible, like I said, but uh, there was this weird moment where we all just kind of stood around thinking, what the hell? Or I was, anyway. I was, you know, what is he doing downstairs? Well, we're all standing around up here waiting on him. Eventually, as you see, I got bored and decided to go back down and find out what the hell was going on. And as it turns out, he decided to go for a 100% clear or something and completely wipe out every squad and group of enemies down here on the bottom floor. I can't complain. XP is XP, but it's, it's just too hilarious that no one's thought to speak up. I mean, I'll admit it, it was pretty stupid on my part not to ask what was going on, but the fact that everyone just kind of assumed things and kept going with what they were doing and never stopped to think about anyone else. I actually started heading for the elevator here and then realised they did and they went the other way. Again, I don't pay attention. I'm good at that. Finally, figure, wise up and figure out. Oh, hey, they're not following me. Better come back and give my hand.
I'm digging the mortar volley if you haven't figured it out. Very powerful AoE attack that stuns weaker enemies. Very fun. That's pretty much what I can say about the trooper overall. It's very fun, very very simple in a way, because you know it's just like fire your blaster, fire at full auto, throw grenades, or fire grenades out of your gun. Pretty much is all I've got at the moment. But there's something something nice in the simplicity of it all. Though you don't need fancy Jedi force moves or whatever to do it. I you know I just go in with the blaster, gun everything down. And that feels good. I like that. Of course, when I do swap my Jedi or Sith characters and get in there with a lightsaber, it's a whole nother experience. <laughs> Watching the sword play in this game is simply amazing. Much better than WoW, where the characters just stand next to each other, waving their swords at each other until someone falls over. They actually fight properly. I'm hoping I might get some good footage of that later and show it off, but... You know, it's not solid, but just watching them actually blocking, dodging, and parrying attacks is quite nice. Very much like KOTOR 1 or 2. They actually fight, they don't just stand next to each other waving their arms until somebody falls over. Of course, there's me getting in there with a pulse cannon attack. Not very useful, unfortunately. It does plenty of damage, but the fact that you have to be right up close to everybody is... Annoying to say the least. I don't go in close that often. And cutscene time. Well, well. I was wondering when you'd finally show up. This is it? There aren't more of you? Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> you all could moment when someone will make a choice. I don't want to have to hurt you or your men. Strange view of the situation. Guess you'd have to be a little crazy to put up the fight you have. Let's vape this worthless scum and get back to work. Now comes the amusing moment when we have our first boss battle in the game. Unfortunately, I do hand up tanking for some reason here. I'm not sure if I was just bad luck or something, but he decides to pick me as the center of attention right off the bat. Let's be honest, I'm not capable of tanking, as you can very clearly see. I'm already three parts dead in the first ten seconds of the fight. I'm gonna go for a med kit here and save myself for a second, but, you know, he takes all that health off in one hit right after, so that didn't get me very far. Going down. This fight goes about as well as you would expect. I do my best to hold on, but, uh, yeah, he pretty much singles me out and nails me in a second. There we go. And my option here at the moment is to return to the start of the area, and I decide to just lay here and watch the fight play out, because there's not really much point. If I abandon the fight, I'm not going to be able to do anything. It's going to be over before I get back. As you can see, he gives the team a run for their money, though. I know someone else goes down. I think it's the smuggler that gets nailed in a minute. Yeah, it's actually the, the other vanguard gets wiped out. Kill me. And of course, there's a couple of soldiers still standing. He drops some nice loot, a blue item this time. Items are the same as well, you know, green is good, blue is better, purple is the best of best. From what I've seen so far, anyway. And now comes the awkward moment where everybody stops to realize, holy crap, we won, and then probably forget to revive me. We're over here, guys. <laughs> this is a pretty funny moment, in my opinion, because, you know, it's like, the captain, Captain Yue here, is not doing anything, but she spends 10 minutes just running around and not picking me up. I'm not sure if she was collecting loot or something, but that was 
That just struck me as incredibly funny that they just leave me to die for some reason for a second or two. But still. I'm not holding a grudge, I just found that incredibly funny at the time. Get all our buffs back in order and join the conversation. Another awkward moment when somebody doesn't join in, so we're left standing here staring at each other for a minute. There we go. First Officer Hawkins, do you have any spare shuttles in the hangar bay? Spare shuttles? Yes, we do, but I don't... Then that's our only chance. You have to board Grand Moff Kilrin's ship and disable the tractor beam so that we can all escape. Head on assault, surgical strike, and rapid exfiltration. No problem. I knew we could count on you. I've been aboard warships like Kilburn's. The tractor beam control should be easy to find if you know where you're going. Ambassador, you're familiar with the layout. Perhaps you should go along to help get the tractor beam shut down. Hmm. We need every advantage we can get. I can't babysit you over there, Ambassador. You're not going. Look, if there's any chance I could make a difference, then we have to try. Ambassador, before you go, take a spare uniform. We wouldn't want any Imperials to recognize you. Good thinking, Commander. Thank you. Now let's get moving. Good luck you out know, there. Funny how... We're all counting on you. <clears throat> you know, it's funny how even though I'm playing a completely different game, I still kind of feel like I'm playing Commander Shepard. From Mass Effect. For some reason my plasma cell doesn't go off, then I have to stop and do it again in a sec. I think it's just the fact that, you know, with the whole incendiary ammo and stuff like that, it kind of feels like Mass Effect in a way. Only without the cover system. I mean, having Jennifer Hale voicing the uh, trooper on top, it does kind of give you Mass Effect vibes, in my opinion. Hey, hold up a minute. I need to talk to you before you go. I just talked to Salen from Engineering. He told me what Asara tried to make you do down there. Thank you for stopping her. Sacrificing innocent people is wrong, no matter the reason. You stood up for the lives of my crew, and risked your own instead. I won't forget that. Listen, I've been thinking. I really believe this plan is going to work. But there's only one way to guarantee that we'll all make it home safe. And that's to make sure the Imperials have no reason to keep chasing us. You want me to hand the Ambassador over to the Imperials, don't you? Yes. For the sake of us all, I want you to leave Asara behind, on the Grand Moff ship. With the tractor beam down, we'll be able to escape, but Kilrun will just chase us down again, unless he's already captured his target. As long as Asara is on this ship, everyone aboard is in danger. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of risking all of our lives for that woman. Freedom is meaningless if it's bought with treachery. I'm not interested in high ideals, Jedi. I'm interested in getting people home safe. Just think about it. I'd even make it worth your while if things go the way I'm suggesting. Anyway, you'd better get going. I've held you up too long already. Good luck. As you can see, the sound seems to have resynced with footage for some reason. I don't know why it doesn't for the first half, it does pick up at this point. And here's me checking the map again, even though it doesn't tell us where to go. <coughs> so yes, I should point out that all of this that we've done so far equals only about half the instance. Because as the uh, cutscenes have suggested, we're about to go over to the Imperial ship and complete the second half on that ship instead. Which is a pretty impressive move in my opinion. We all are signing up to get on. And then cue the awkward moment when we realize someone else isn't here. Uh, try again, shall we? <laughs> Unfortunately, this does lead to a rather interesting moment. It's the fact that they say a, a Sarah, or whatever her name is, is with us the whole time. She's supposed to be helping us out, but then she vanishes after this point. You, know, you see her there with the 
squad that comes over, and then they all just stop in this room, and the rest just go on ahead. You never see them again. Oh, is that a, that's probably a bit of a spoiler, but whatever. I know this is supposed to be a flashpoint and all that, so that technically it's all on us, but, you know. Why even have these guys come over with us if they're just gonna guard the ship? Or whatever. Here's me standing in the proverbial fire again, getting hit with a grenade. Something to that effect. And, as I said, this is where the formulaic design comes back, you know, two soldiers, one droid to cast. And I just hit level 12, go me. I think I hit level 13 by the end of this. I go to spend my talent points too, for some stupid reason. I probably realize I can't put it in the talent I was already building, so I'll put it aside for later. Not much I can say about the overall gameplay from this point on. It's pretty much, as I said, you just run to the point to point, shoot all the enemies, move on to the next one. I can understand this is like the first instance you get a hold of, so it's not going to be that difficult. It's more to help you get the hang of what you're actually going to be doing in a flashpoint, in my opinion, but still a good challenge and good fun. The enemies don't go down easy if you're not paying attention. Yeah, I love that rifle by walking up and smashing their face in with the buddy rifle. Being a trooper is super awesome. And I have no idea why I just said that, but maybe something is. <laughs> oh, I'm not editing it out. As you can see, the droids aren't slouching. I mean, I'm losing health left, right, and center when the droid focuses on me. Hard to believe I'm actually gearing this character to be a tank when I'm losing health like that. Although, looking at the group, we don't actually have a healer at this point. It's one thing I realized we we're lacking about at this point. We have two tanks, and I'm not sure about the Jedi. I think he might actually be a tank as well. And the Smoker, I'm not sure about either. I haven't really researched their classes. But I know the Trooper can be a tank or a healer. Depending on which career path to take at this point. Slight moment of lag there. I'm not sure what happened, but it seems like I lagged out or something. Yeah. As I said, it's pretty formulaic, nothing really to talk about here. The encounters are easy to get through and as you can see, extra quests pop up that just clear entire areas, and that was pretty cool. They don't force you to kill every single enemy in the game, but they don't. You know, they reward you if you choose to be a 100% completionist. The Lord Trinket here. Loot. Looting is pretty much standard as you see, need before greed, roll need if you need it, really roll greed if you don't, all that good stuff. And cue me making another fool of myself here, because I don't see these guys on I still don't know how I missed them. But of course I end up screwing up here and pulling the enemies a bit too soon. We clear them out just fine. And then as I'm going up here, I'm tab-targeting to get to the enemies and don't realize I accidentally tab-targeted the group over there. So cue an embarrassing moment on my part where I end up pulling two separate groups at once. Lovely. I'm not afraid to admit that was completely my fault. No one complained though. I'm well, thankful for that. Luckily, we're a pretty solid group and managed to clear them out easy. Out and we move on to the computer terminal. Well, I've seen some incredible things in my time, but you just topped the list. I'm sorry I couldn't reach you in person. If only you had let me know you were stopping by. 
If this is a bad time, we could come back later. Oh, no, not <laughs> at all, I assure you. I'm quite prepared for your visit. My men will be along shortly to escort you to the accommodations I've arranged. Your men can't stop us, Kilran. You greatly overestimate your chances. Iron Fist wasn't the only weapon in my arsenal, nor the deadliest. See you soon. Ooh, foreshadowing. You know, I only just noticed at this point that both the female characters and both the male characters in our group have the same body type. You know, there's like four different ones you can choose from being, you know, various heights and builds and all that, but I didn't notice until just then we're all te technically using the same body type in that way. You know, me and the smuggler are the same, and the two male characters appear to be the same as well. The trip could be a bit taller, I'm not sure, but I just noticed that then, I didn't notice it earlier. Kind of amusing. To me, anyway. Lots more clearing of rooms. I'm, rather, I'm kind of not sure what to say here, man. I could talk about the game, but then again, I'm not really that, you know. I'm not a damn game reviewer, so I don't know what to say here. I'll admit that was kind of cool, the Jedi just ripping a chunk out of the floor and throwing it at the droid. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. I think I've totally missed my point on the social points earlier that we keep getting. I know it's a case if you get 4 points for making a choice and 8 points if your choice is the one that rolls highest is carried out, so... But again, I don't know what the points are actually used for. I only saw a couple of items, like a targeting system or something. I don't know what it does, but you know, there's a couple of things you can get for social points when you first start the game, but aside from that, you know, I don't know what social points are for, what the ranks are for, but... Hell, I'm loving the instances so far, so I'm going to be doing a lot more of them, and you get points pretty much every time you group, so... I'll be getting tons of them, hopefully I have something to report next time. As you can see, the groups are picking up in difficulty a bit here, the uh, other troop is actually taking more damage and getting... Completely destroyed. Well, not completely. He's holding up better than I did when we took on the Iron Fist. <laughs> that was embarrassing. But hey, we're doing pretty good. QSL stop at the heal. I'm not sure why, I just much prefer this method of healing to stopping to eat a loaf of bread in WoW. And that, that never sat right with me. I know suspension of disbelief and all that, but the fact it looks like your character is bleeding to death, so he stops, has a bite to eat, and then he's perfectly fine, never works, but, you know, stopping, in the case of Jedi, stopping to collect your thoughts, and, or in the case of the soldier, stopping to check over your gear, and reload everything and that, I don't know, it seems to work better in my opinion, it seems a lot more natural. Here that time. I also appreciate that it doesn't. The game doesn't keep you out of the fight for too long. You know, not that that was really a problem in WoW either, but you know, it's the fact that you don't have to stop for ten minutes to get your health up and rebuff or anything. I mean, pretty much every buff you get is either permanent or like on a thirty-minute timer, so you can pretty much set it off and then keep it going for the entire run if you don't die. Which works pretty well in my opinion. Less, the less downtime the better. That's one thing I don't like is having to sit around for ages before anything happens. Here the only time we get stopped is when a cutscene happens. And, you know, I'm gonna be perfectly honest, the cutscenes are actually what's making the game fun at this point. I got sick of WoW very quickly. Well, I played WoW for five years, I'll admit that, but you know, the combat really kind of slowed me down, and the fact that 99% of the quests are kill 10 of this enemy, and then kill 10 of that enemy, you know. 
Here the only kill quests you actually get are the bonus ones that you can completely ignore if you want. But given the fact 9 times out of 10 you have to kill your way to the target objective for them anyway, you know, just extra XP on the side to kill them. But the fact that there's always a reason for it, you know, and WoW is pretty much just like, oh hey, you know, I can't be bothered doing it so you go kill them or whatever, but here it's like, there's an actual war going on, and cutscenes and all that to fill you in on why your character's motivated to do it. You know, I certainly enjoy this a lot more than WoW at the moment. You know, WoW certainly kept my interest for a while, but, it, you know, five years on the same game, you're gonna get tired eventually. I actually came into this thinking very cynically, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be bored within a week. But so far it's holding up. Maybe that'll change as time goes on, but you know, if it's, I've been playing for about three days straight now and I haven't hit a boring point yet. And I, I finally wised up there and put the plasma cell option off on the sidebar as you can see. I'm sick of catching it because you know, I mean, I've got full auto right next to it on my keyboard so I'm hitting full auto on the grenade or something and keep popping the plasma cell out at the same time. Not impressed with that. So I finally wised up, you know, 12 levels in, finally wised up, put on a different bar so I don't catch it. Like I said, I'm a bit thick headed and slow at times. I'm not afraid to admit that. Weird moment where the game freezes there, I'm not sure what happened. Performance wise, it's held up pretty well for me. You know, my computer's not exactly state of the art anymore. About three years old now. Holds up pretty well. Settings are lowered, obviously, to keep it smooth, but rarely had frame rate issues. I've had the odd moment of sound stuttering, but nothing game breaking. Most of the performance stuff that I've encountered can pretty much be attributed to my computer, so I'm not too worried. As I said before, I've had little to no bugs or instabilities. Now comes the next boss, well, mini boss, right? And here is where I finally wise up and start moving out of the, you know, damage cones. I finally figured out, oh hey, they're not something you're supposed to stand in, dummy. Start jumping out of the way. I don't jump out of the way of that, but who can blame me? I don't think you can move out of the way of things like that, but I finally wised up and started jumping out of the cones. And down goes the boss. And he drops boots. Very nice boots, that. Which I just so happened to win the roll of. Me double checking they're good and putting them on. Yeah. They don't look as snazzy as my old boots, but, you know, stats, that's where it's at. Weird, weird moment where we all hit the control console, but then it unticks for some reason. You're leaving me with precious few options. I don't know why the voice actor for the Grand Mob is really good in my opinion. He truly sounds like a bad guy. Very intimidating in a way. Well, maybe not intimidating, but very cool. Fits the part of the Grand Mob character well in my opinion. And now cue my biggest WTF moment in this thing. Namely, why the hell is a power droid wielding a huge cleaver? I mean, power droid insinuates something that would be here for maintenance. You know, to fix the power couplings you blew up in the middle there, but... What the hell? The thing's like 20 feet tall and carrying a cleaver bigger than me. And here's me just running around screaming for the fact that it's locked onto me for some reason. I didn't really want to see what that cleaver could do up close. Cue me finding a shiny new shield generator and passing it for some stupid reason. And of course, uh, the other. The, I think the smuggler ultimately gets him. I don't think she can even use it. So, cue a bit of a face palm on my part. But I, I believe I was doing the right thing because you know, I scored the heavy armor boots off the 
Oh, the droids. I was leaving the shield generator for the vanguard. I don't think he even rolled on it either. He probably had better. So, kind of a face on my part. That was an upgrade and I missed it. No, oh, well. I can always run it again, probably, and try for that shield generator again. And cue the next WTF moment as to why we go finally shut down the tractor beam and then decide to go to the detention so It makes sense later, but you know, that, that just threw me off at the time. Especially with, uh, you know, me trying to get this instant done. It's like, come on, <laughs> just let us leave. But, I, was, I certainly enjoyed every minute of this, but you know, it was like dinner was on the table at this point in time and I just wanted to finish up and go. And I wasn't really getting the opportunity. This instance is not short, as you've obviously figured out. I mean, the running time for the video that I've talked about, and this is with double the recommended group number, was like an hour long. Pretty solid dungeon. Tiny loop. Unfortunately there's a couple of moments I've noticed like that where everyone stops to heal and then someone jumps the gun and shoots, thus interrupting our healing, but... Oh, and he leveled up, that's to him. But, you know, that, unfortunately that happens, and again, this is, you know, there's not too much where I'm upset here because of the fact that... Yeah, I just finally remember to move that time. You know, it's not that much of an upset because we were all pretty much full health at that point anyway, so... It's something I will have to keep an eye on. I'm not going to be looking for people sitting down munching on bread. I'm going to be looking for people either meditating or reloading their guns. It's a learning experience, but I not a difficult one. I don't want to do one. anything drastic, but I will surrender now. See ya. As I said, th things are pretty smooth going. It would have been interesting to actually do this dungeon with just two people, you know, see how, how different it actually is, but I'm not that bothered. I'm sure the flashpoints are going to get much harder on from this point onwards, as we all level up and tanking and healing becomes a requirement. Cue the very awkward lag spike on Ty's part, the very weird leg breaking moment if we all drop down into the garbage compactor. Uh, I expected more from this scene, I'll be honest. I mean, come on, this reminds me of episode 4 so badly, and yet they don't take advantage of it. As you can see, we land the garbage master and then just climb up the ramp and leave. Somehow finding a pair of boots in the muck. Uh, excuse me. Too much Christmas meat. I don't know what they would have actually done there, I mean, it would have been an awesome scene if they decided to actually kick in the garbage masher, like the movie, but, you know, I'm not sure how you would have solved it in this situation. Once again, we're just pretty much blazing through this place, we're taking hits and plenty of damage, but, hell, we're just dishing out a lot more than they can do to us in the long run, so... Nothing's really slowing us down. And as you can see, I'm a bit obsessive compulsive with my troop buff. <laughs> it lasts like 30 minutes, but I keep doing it every 10 for some reason. Another four sealed wall. I think we're actually almost done. What's the running time on this? Yeah. Nearly done. About 10 minutes of footage to go. Cue the awkward moment where I run for the console and everyone else runs away from it. Much of my charge is just like, come on guys, can we leave? Again, I'm st I mean, I'm not trying to paint a picture that I was frustrated or anything, but it was just, I wanted to log and I thought an instance would have been a good thing to do to kill 20 minutes, but uh, flashpoints apparently last a lot longer than WoWs. Cue the next cutscene. Oh dear. 
surprised to guess on who this guy is. <laughs> I love how the other two soldiers are just like, oh snap, force user and just spin around and bolt. Some soldiers they turned out to be. Greetings. At last, a real live Jedi. How I've looked Hi, forward just ignore to this. us. A true Sith cannot go long without a true challenge. Keep them talking. I'll flank them. A Sith is not so easily fooled. To destroy a dangerous foe, that is the way of a true Sith. When I carve your heart from your chest, your fellow Jedi will sense your defeat, as will my master. Yeah, hi, just master. continue ignoring us, mate. And will your master feel it when I put a blaster shot right between your eyes? Such witticisms will not save you. The power of the dark side is infinite. Are you ready to face oblivion? Are you ready to fight, or are you gonna spout gibberish all day? You're right! <laughs> Words are nothing well, without action! Here's Joker's twin brother, Darth Joker. Oh, that was not funny in my head either. Key the next big boss battle. Strangely enough, I actually found this guy a lot easier than Iron Fist. I'm not sure if it's just because he doesn't focus on me for most of the fight, but... You know, he just seems to go down a lot faster, and he doesn't do as much damage. But again, I'll, I'm not exactly geared for combat directly, and uh, he doesn't exactly focus on me at any point, so... Maybe, maybe it's just because I don't get pummeled senseless like I did with Iron Fist. He singled me out and shot me right off the bat in the first fight. But as you can see, he's already like down to a quarter health. I totally blew that pulse cannon around there, didn't I? Kind of took my eyes off screen for a minute. Oh snap. I don't know, I do appreciate that they give you time to get out of the thing, but it kind of looks funny that he's sort of charging his attack and giving you a warning before he nails anyone. He was like, I'm a charge of my lightning! No, don't move, I'll hit you in a second. I'm our main turbo gases batteries. In a few moments, your pathetic ship and all your pathetic friends will be nothing but floating debris. Right yes, please. I think I missed that one, don't I? Can't tell. But I was determined not to let the, sh the shield incident happen again. Key the final cutscene. Come on, for this get onto the shuttles. We have to hurry. If we launch fast enough, I think we can make it. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Light side choice. Let's get out of here. First Officer Haken doesn't want you to come back from this one, Ambassador. He thinks you'll just cause more trouble. Is this a joke? That spineless, indecisive... He wants you to hand me over to the Imperials? I'm the only one who cho chose to just leave. After everything everyone I've done else to save the ship, everything I've done for the Republic, that scum tries to betray me to the Empire. Wait. You didn't actually agree to leave me behind, did you? Of course not. Light side choice. We're not gonna Keeping leave Keeping you with us would be too dangerous, Asara. Wait, what? No. What? How can you do this to me? How can you just leave me here to no, die? No, it's the Jedi that just chose the option. Now I have to live with it. <laughs> Sometimes sacrifices have to be made for the greater good, Ambassador. How dare you? So yes, as you can see, I have to put up with the dark side choice, even though I picked the light side option. Go. Just go. That was actually the 
biggest moment of hilarity there, especially since it's the Jedi who cho chose to leave behind and won the roll off at that point. So yes, we all got a good laugh out of that. I was just like, what the hell? Everybody's voting to save her, and then he's like, nope, sorry, we're leaving her behind. And he's, of course, gets the roll off. So yes, I don't actually get a say in the matter anymore. I chose to save her, he didn't, well, he won the roll, so... As far as storyline goes, I'm now a douchebag who just left the ambassador to die. Go me. No complaints though, I mean, that's that's one thing I do like about the game, is the fact that, you know, the story changes to suit the group, not the individual person. You know, it, it's kind of like a voting system. Whoever gets the best, the most votes wins sort of thing, so I really like that. You know, he voted to not to save her, we all voted to save her, so we get our points, but he gets to decide the story outcome. No complaints, I like that. Now we get to wrap things up and finish this instance. One hour and eight minutes later. <laughs> we glitch this in. Everyone's aboard, Plex. Get us out of here now. So it takes a while for them to did, did what no one else could have done. You've saved us all. We owe you our lives, every one of us. So on behalf of the passengers and crew of the Republic Transport Esselus, thank you. I hope those thanks come with a hefty reward. Of course, of course. Typical Heroism one. deserves to be rewarded. I took up a collection from everyone on the ship. Hopefully these credits will help you save other people in need, the same way you saved us. Thank you very much. Don't forget that bonus I promised for that extra bit of help. I'd say you've done quite well for yourself. It's a shame that Ambassador Asara had to lay down her life so the rest of us could escape. The Republic is fortunate to have heroes like Asara. And like you. <laughs> I'm no hero. Funny I didn't even get a choice in the matter. Life, sir. <laughs> and I'd say you do the Republic proud. One thing's for sure. Grand Moff Kilrun won't forget about this anytime soon. He's going to want revenge. Count on it. Asara was Kilrun's target. I don't think he cares about us. Even so, you made his work much harder than it should have been. Anyway, enough of that talk. It's time I got back to the helm. Enjoy the rest of your trip, and thanks again for everything you've done. Well, unfortunately that is the end of the instance. It was a very fun run in my opinion. I had a solid group, no complaining, no dropouts and all that, so... Hopefully you enjoyed this too. I was trying my best to keep the commentary amusing, but you know... I'm not very good with commentary in the first place, alone trying to think up stuff to do post-recording on top. But unfortunately I just wasn't in a position and didn't really have the opportunity. I got kind of roped into the group out of the blue and didn't really have time to do anything except hit record on traps. So we get one final vote to go home. I chose to go back to the Imperial fleet rather than on the exit destination. Like I said, I wanted to leave. <laughs> but yes, I hope you enjoyed that. That's unfortunately the end of the video and I'm second so I'm just going to wrap this up real quick. I hope you all enjoyed that and happy gaming everyone. I'll see you next time. There was a little bit more to this, but the very last video file got corrupted, so... Yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. More Old Republic, more Tribes, more Earth Defense Force, probably. are all on the way. So... Keep your eyes on the subscription box if you're subscribed. Keep your eyes on the channel if not. Oh yes, can't forget that I added everyone to friends list. <laughs>